Welcome to our daily Bible study. I am your host, Dr. Derek A. Reeves, and today we're going to continue on in the series, Understanding Fear. Today's lesson will be entitled, Terms for Fear, Part 16. So let's move right on into our lesson for today. There's so much that I want to unpack here. So let's begin. We're going to go to a term now that is not necessarily the word for fear, but it is a Hebrew word for feared. Remember, we are doing a definitive study that will enable us to investigate every term in Scripture, both in the Old and the New, that has to deal with fear. Fear, fearful, fears, or feared. Everything within the context that gives us an understanding of what fear is. <clears throat> and so we want to look at the term in the Hebrew. It is the term sa'ar, sa'ar. Sa'ar then is a prime root and it means to storm. And by implication, it deals with shivering or shivering from fear. Uh, something that is horrible, or something that invests within you, a rising fear that causes your emotions to spin out of control. And so it is reflected to be kind of like a tempestuous storm, or a storm that comes to take away as with a whirlwind. And so it's likened to a fear that comes as we see a tornado or maybe a hurricane, something that is moving in so quick and so uh, tempestuous that elicits a fear in our life. If we were to go a little further, it means to storm. And so not only does it liken uh, the emotion of fear as a storm, but it means something that storms. Typically, when you see a storm, it forces you to run for cover. Even the sound of the thunder can shake the very foundation of the ground you're on and cause you to retreat. And so this is a type of fear that brings one to shiver, to dread, uh, to bristle with horror. In other words, the hair stands up on the back of your neck and the fear causes literal physical responses from the fear because the brain begins to excrete the adrenaline and all of those other things that are associated with fear. The body responds to what the mind is sensing. And so it means to be very afraid. And so another aspect is to storm away or sweep away as a whirlwind. We've said before that emotions are such a way that they move you from one position, either from a mental or an emotional position, they move you to act. They can also move you from your physical location. Remember the four F's, and you're going to hear much more about the four F's in this series. Again, um, fear can elicit fight, flight, freeze, or faint. And so, it can deal with to be stormy, to be tempestuously, exceedingly. Uh, it is to storm against, to come as a storm. And so this scenario then is likened to a storm that blows everything away. And so it can be the type of fear that roots or uproots you out of your consistency and uproots you out of your stability and causes you to flee, much like a wind would drive those things around. And so it deals with a, a storm that is horrible, and it's associated with the strong winds and the torrents of a storm or of a person's rage that calls one to fear. It is to be afraid as from a storm or a whirlwind. It is as from a storm where there is a tempest and you feel something overwhelming you, preparing to swallow you and to take you totally out. 
It is the fear of a horrible thing. If we were to take it a little further, it is a verb, sa'ar, meaning to sweep away, to whirl away. And the image brought to mind when this verb is used is that of a stormy wind sweeping things away that cannot stand against its power. And so this type of fear brings to the mind a realization that whatever it is, you cannot stand against it to wind. And the very sense of the presence of that thing or the over-empowering essence of its uh, scenario to do you harm causes your emotions to move you away. Let's move to the next term for fear. This next term for fear we're going to deal with back into the Greek terms and we're going to go back to the New Testament because the New Testament remember is written in Greek and in certain parts Aramaic and in this terms or these terms rather they're going to move us into terms for fearful and while, while I'm at it I might as well go back to the first term that's here and the first term is actually a Hebrew term from the Old Testament which is the word ma'ar ma Har. And so when we look at this word in the Old Testament, it's a very interesting word. Remember the Old Testament, the Shemitic languages, they were very concrete and very uh, personable. And here the word mahar means properly to be liquid or to flow easily, that is to hurry in a good or a bad sense. It's often used with another verb adverbally, which means promptly, to be carried headlong, fearful, or caused to make in a haste. And again, this is the type of fear that moves one into the forest. And in this case, it's not fight, but it is flight. There are times when fear causes avoidance tendencies. There are times when fear causes one to flee out of the sense of self preservation. If we were to go a little further, the term means to hasten, to be hurried or to be anxious, uh, to be hasty, to precipitate or to be impetuous. And so it's dealing again with how one moves. One just doesn't move from this sense of fear, but they move hastily. They move quickly because the looming threat is so disadvantageous to them that they flee for terror and they flee for horror. When we look at the ancient Hebrew, the pictograph is a picture of water and it's also a picture of a man's head. And when you combine these pictographs together, it means water head or head waters. And so the head waters of a river are only a trickle and have stagnant pools causing the water to be bitter. Something that is bitter of taste or attitude deals with rebellion. And so rebellion is one with a bitter attitude. And so from this, when you talk about headwaters or the first waters, it deals with the bitterness that causes one contention. And so to be fearful is not only to be bitter, but it can be discontented. And so the headwaters of a river are only a trickle and they have stagnant um, bitterness or poisonness. And so it's like a choleric point of view. It is a type of fear that grieves. It's the type of fear that provokes one. It vexes one. It can deal with even a bitter stomach. And so this type of fear impacts the physiological. It causes one Again, bitterness, it causes one to be choleric, to be grieved in their emotions or in their mind. And so it impacts the emotions. And more than likely, it, being, it brings um, a point where the individual becomes incapacitated and unable to function 
because of the threat. I thank you for joining us. This has been our daily Bible study, and this is the session where we're dealing with understanding fear. I am your host, Dr. Derek A. Reeves, and until next time, God bless and keep you.